you know for a fact they're overpriced and you'd be like, why am I paying this much for a foundation? Is it going to fix my credit score? The answer is no, unfortunately. A $20 foundation with this packaging, it should, I don't know. Hotter than the six in the summer day. Well, hello. I did my first foundation is hard video um, a few weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago now. And y'all really liked it and wanted to see more. So here I am, back by somewhat popular demand. This series is called Foundation is Hard. It is foundation reviews, but it's looking at them from a realistic standpoint. Like I said in the first one, um, people that make beauty content, beauty gurus, um, makeup YouTubers, whatever, always look at foundation as an expert. Um, I'm not an expert in foundation. I have been doing my makeup for years and years and years and I'm still learning um, as we all should be because every single foundation is gonna be different for the most part. I'm not gonna pretend. Some of these foundations be confusing. They be blending funny. Um, the shade matching is hard. You know for a fact they're overpriced and you be like, why am I paying this much for a foundation? Is it going to fix my credit score? The answer is no, unfortunately. How well does the foundation actually sit on your skin? It's not gonna be sliding around. It's gonna be physically comfortable like, we need to really look into all this because foundation is freaking confusing. It is the base of all your makeup. And if the base ain't right, if the foundation ain't right, the house will fall down. So foundation is hard and I'm here to make it easier for you. Today we're taking a look at the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Foundation. This is actually my first time using a Juvia's Place product. Also, this nail is broken. I don't wanna talk about it. Just leave me alone. We have the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Foundation. So let's start with the first um, preliminary things, pricing, shade matching. Um, this is $20. Obviously I can't tell if, like say if that's worth the money or not yet. But um, to me, $20 is pretty pricey for a foundation. Um, just because the drugstore has great foundations under $20, you know, let's be real. So a $20 foundation better be hitting for something. But it's not outrageous. It's not $70. It's not $45, you know. Um, it is reasonably priced for a non-drugstore brand. And then as far as shade matching, I don't really have a problem with shade matching, but they do have a lot of shades. The shade matching... Um, seem to be very straightforward and it seems to have a really good range which we expect from a brand like Juvia's Place. So yeah, um, the shade matching was nothing to write home about. It wasn't difficult um, and it wasn't a little too suspiciously easy being that they didn't have enough shades. You know what I mean? I just took it out of the packaging for the first time. It looks like, the, it looks like a little Avon um, lotion or something or like a Mary Kay face moisturizer or something. This is not your typical foundation um packaging but i think it's pretty i think it's pretty so before we get into application um if you're new here or maybe you just are not very well versed in my videos i'm going to confess a makeup sin that i commit on a daily basis i don't use primer and i usually don't use powder oh wow i am disgusted let me explain. America explains. America explain. Explain. What do you mean in Arkansas? Let me explain. So, I feel like, not just with foundations, with all makeup products, but a product should be able to stand on its own. Um, everything else should be like reinforcements or like um, accessories. I should not have to prime. I don't like to prime. Primers break me out for whatever reason. Like, I don't know what the ingredient is that makes a primer a primer but whatever it is it breaks me up for show so I don't prime and I feel like a foundation should last without a primer you shouldn't need a primer to hold your weight the foundation should last on its own um, and I like to use concealers and um, foundations that will stay in place without me having to set them because I don't like how dry setting feels on my face even if i only set just a little bit it, it's just a tiny bit of dryness I'm, I'm usually not here for it um so that's that i have combination skin i'm never too dry never too oily so i can kind of get away with that so just like i'm just letting y'all know so when you look at me and i'm not priming and i'm not setting and you're not like i know that girl's makeup is sliding all over the place if i use the right products they're really not because i don't have oily skin and i don't have super dry skin where like the product's gonna stick to my face or anything i am like balanced right in the middle 
for the most part, most of the time. So, but I feel like a foundation should be able to hold its own. Uh, powder and primer should be optional, especially if you're spending that dough on a foundation. I am in the shade, oh, Acra 330. I'm going to take the foundation. Let's start with applying it with the sponge. My preferred a sponge. I mean, the, well, yeah, a sponge. A blender, a sponge. Yeah, it's a sponge. Um, my preferred method is the brush. I never, when I'm applying with a sponge, because I typically apply with a brush, I'm always like, okay, like, do I put the product right on my face? Should I put it on the sponge? Like, I'm just so not used to doing that in my personal everyday routine. I um, spread the foundation first, like I just did, and then I'm gonna start going section by section. I'm just like right off the bat first impressions i'm getting medium coverage and i think i'm gonna like this being applied better with a brush not that the sponge side looks bad at all but i just think i'm gonna like it better with the brush this is a new nose ring this is my first day wearing it i just got makeup all over it this foundation i'm gonna say medium coverage medium to full um, <clears throat> more on the medium, it's in between medium and full, but closer to medium. And it's very skin-like, it's not cakey at all. I really like it. But it kinda, like finish-wise, it kinda gives me like matte Fit Me vibes, but a little less matte. Okay, or like the Fit Me foundation coverage, but if there was one that was right in the middle, one that wasn't dewy, wasn't matte which is a little bit alarming because Fit Me is a lot cheaper. But let's do the other side. So this is the brush side. This is the sponge side. The brush side took a lot more work to blend with this foundation. It kind of just smears around on your face and you gotta like really, really, really blend it out, spread the product, like do all this extra. Um, looking at it, the finish is more or less the same, but it looks more skin-like on the um, on the sponge side, which I believe is because you're actually pressing the product into your skin, you know, clogging your pores better with the sponge. So I'm gonna say this foundation is best with a sponge application. Sponge application wins because although the finish looks more or less the same, there's a hair on my eye, don't mind me, I'm just gonna get it. Um, although the finish looks more or less the same, the sponge application is even better and it's faster and easier. Okay, now <laughs> I was just literally digging in my own camera. I'm so sorry, that was so ugly. Now we're gonna see if the foundation plays nice with other products. Um, but just before I do that, notes so far are medium to full coverage, closer to medium, um, which I really like. I think it looks pretty. I like to judge coverage by this mole I have over here. Oh, hold up. The mold's like completely covered. I'm gonna say this is full coverage. I take that back. Um, I have to judge by the mold mostly because um, I don't have a lot of visible, like dramatic acne scars or anything on my face. So sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes a light coverage, a full coverage can look the same on my face. But judging by my mold down here, it is completely covered. This is a full coverage foundation. I take that back. Now medium, full. Um, easier and better better looking by just a little bit application on um, the sponge side. So we know this foundation is best applied with a sponge and um, shade matching and price fairly, fairly decent. So yeah, let's see if it plays nice with other products. I'm gonna do the rest of my face off camera and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I went to lunch today with one of my friends. Then we did a little bit of shopping, uh, walked the mall a little bit. And now I'm here for you. The time is about 8.30, 8.45 ish. Um, so that is about five to six hours of wear. So as far as physical comfort, that is um, pretty good. I don't feel restricted. I don't feel like the foundation is like uncomfortable or like makes my skin feel any type of way. But I will say this, transfer is high on this foundation. If I'm talking on the phone, I look and I see my foundation. I had even like just like touched my face, like scratched it or patted it a little bit and I saw my foundation on my fingers and on my nails. So this foundation does transfer if you're somebody like me who feels like a foundation should stand its own ground without any powder to hold it down. This is not the foundation for you. Like I said in the previous clip too, 
Um, you do get some texture and honestly, it's hard to tell right now because I'm in front of this light, but on me, I feel like it oxidized a little bit and got a little darker. Um, because I don't know, it just, it looked a little dark on me when I saw myself um, as like, as the day progressed a few hours in, I felt like I was looking a little oxidized, but um, it wasn't too, too bad. But I don't like the way that it was transferring onto my phone, my hands, clothes, stuff like that. I don't, I don't like transferring and it does do that, um, which a lot of foundations don't for me when I don't set them. So don't try to say you need to be setting, you need to be priming and there's no transfer. The foundation on its own should not transfer. Obviously, if you rub it off, it's gonna come off for any foundation, but foundation on its own should not transfer the way that this one did. Um, I don't like that you can see texture as well as you can because I don't have a lot of texture. And I was saying that it doesn't really enhance texture, but maybe it does a little bit because this kind of gave me texture. Foundations do that sometimes, unfortunately. This foundation kind of gave me texture, you know what I mean? And I really didn't like that. Um, especially in the lower half of my face. Ugh, I did not like that. My last point I wanna make about this foundation, bro. A $20 foundation with this packaging, it should, I don't know. I, I don't dislike the packaging. I really think it's cute, but this is just very cheap packaging for a $20 foundation. Like this is not a drugstore foundation. And uh, there are drugstore foundations with better like glass acrylic containers or you know, whatever. This is this is very drugstore packaging minus the box to me. Um, and even still, the box is not made out of like great material like you want to display in your collection. So let's wrap this up. Let me read my notes here. So for a price, we're going to give this um, we're gonna give this a six out of ten. For shade matching, we're going to give it a seven out of 10. That's 70%, that's a C. It's not super easy. It, actually, no, let's do eight out of 10 because it was like, it was fine. Eight out of 10 for shade matching. Application ease gets a five out of 10 because it's only easy to apply with a sponge. Um, I should be able to choose how I want to apply it because applying it with a brush was like actually difficult for me. Like. It was hard. Physical comfort, I'm going to give a eight. Nothing to write home about, um, but it was comfortable. It wasn't uncomfortable, so that's an eight. Finish and coverage. This I'm going to give a seven. A seven because it's full coverage, it has good coverage, but um, the finish really kind of enhanced texture so we don't want to go higher than a seven and longevity this foundation to me is not long wearing because i've only had it on five hours and like i said um it was transferring a lot i'm not too too oily like but i am more oily especially in like this area here for head to nose i'm oily in the upper half of my face more so than i would be with other foundations longevity i'm going to give a five out of 10. Sorry, I don't feel like I should have to set the product to make it work. I'm gonna give this overall foundation a six out of 10. Um, six out of 10 because it, you know, enhances texture. It's not very long wearing from my uh, experience today. Um, it's hard to apply with a brush, but it's full coverage. So that wraps up the second episode of Foundation is Hard with the Juvia's Place I Am Magic Foundation. Thank you guys so much for watching and enjoying this series. Like, that means a lot to me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like, thanks for, like, wanting my opinion. Like, I kind of appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to go take this makeup off and binge watch Netflix series. I love you. Mwah. Hotter than the six in the summer, dead ass girl. I want girl. I know you wanna, you know I wanna. Yeah, yeah, she keep giving me love. Yeah, girl, I know you wanna.